from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Jonas Parks, Mr. Dollar, the Flint Rock Bank. Yeah, I know, the man who warned me. How's that? You said it would be tough to get into the Gramley Ranch. Well, I got rained on, shot at, threatened, outsmarted by a 16-year-old girl, and I still didn't see Mrs. Gramley. You aiming to give up? For tonight, yes. I'm busy trying to dry out my bones over the heat from a triple brandy. Well, I'm going out to see Mrs. Gramley in the morning. I'll try to fix something up. Yeah, do that, will you? And something else, Mr. Parks. That auto accident three years ago when Susan's parents were killed. What about it, Mr. Dollar? You know what about it. Uh, me, the dead past is always with us. But you go see Will Connors there in Las Vegas. He runs the Ford County Weekly Tribune. Tell him I sent you. And be careful. Once again, Mr. Parks, careful of what? I still don't know. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Las Vegas, Nevada... To the home office, American Northern Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the matter of reasonable doubt. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item four, seven dollars and a quarter. A triple wasn't enough, so I bought the whole bottle and took it up to my room. I was bushed, and not just from being caught out in a desert cloudburst. Mrs. Gramley, elderly widow, owner of the Flint Rock Ranch, wanted to set up an insurance trust and convey all her holdings over to her 16-year-old granddaughter, Susan. Her only other heirs were her nephew, Walter, who managed the ranch, and his wife, Hilda. Jason Parks, my client's local representative and respected president of the Flint Rock Bank, had started proceedings, then got cold feet and dropped them. Why? He didn't know. Just a hunch. Something was wrong. He'd call for help. And I was that help. Total results so far, zero. I put the cork in the brandy bottle and went to bed. I'll be with you in a minute, young fellow. No hurry. The Weekly Tribune, like a thousand other Weekly Tribunes across the country, not competing with the big dailies, not even trying to. Printing the little things, homey things, and hanging on. One man office, editor, publisher, reporter, proofreader, and at the moment, linotype operator. A guess, of course, but the man at the linotype looked as though his name just had to be Will Connors. My name is Will Connors. What can I do for you? I'm Johnny Dollar, Mr. Connors. Jonas Parks out at Flint Rock suggested Oh, I... yeah. Yeah, Jonas called me this morning, said you'd probably be in. Glad to know you. Thanks. Same here. He said you'd most likely be asking all sorts of crazy questions. And I was to, well... Humor me? Well, you might put it that way. Said I was to answer them if I could. Did Mr. Parks tell you who I am? Nope. Didn't ask him. Jonas and me have been friends for 20 years, and if he says you're all right, then that's good enough for me. Well, thanks to both of you. Just one thing, though, Mr. Dollar. There going to be a story in this? Maybe. Any chance giving me a scoop on it? Scoop? <laughs> I haven't heard that word in years. I ain't had one in years. In fact, I ain't never had one. Always have to get my front page stories by reading these here Las Vegas dailies. Yeah. Bunch of smart alecks getting telegraphs from Moscow and Paris and France and all them places. Anybody can get scoops that way. But me, I got to get out and scratch for what I print. Well, I'll... Oh, it sure do me good to put one over on them dudes. I'd get me out an extra. A big banner headline on it. Got the type for it, too. Never been used. Exclusive. Right across the top. <laughs> It'd yeah, knock them back on their byline. All right, Mr. Connors, all right. If there is a story, you get it. That's a promise. A scoop. A living, breathing scoop. Dog gone. Yeah. Now, about the question... Yes, about... sir, young fellow, what do you want to know? Anything you can tell me about Mrs. Gramley and the Flint Rock Ranch? Mrs. Gramley? Well, now, there is a woman for you, son. They don't make that kind these days. Noticed any change in her lately? Well, I, uh... I wouldn't want this to go any farther. I understand. 
And I guess it depends on what you mean by lately. I ain't seen her but twice in the last year. They don't allow no visitors out there anymore. So I found out yesterday her nephew took a shot at me with a rifle. You don't say. My, they are getting clannish. Do you know of any reason for him acting that way? Well, there's something funny going on out that ranch. What, for instance? Couldn't say. But like I was telling you, I've only seen her twice, and she was different somehow. It was like she was, well, breaking up, sort of. Scared of something? Maybe. I don't know. Have a nephew by any chance? Walter? Well, I'd say he acts about as scared as she does, or as upset, at least. Maybe they're both scared of something. What about the granddaughter, Susan? Is she scared, too? <laughs> no, that one. Oh, she's strange enough, all right. But the old Nick himself wouldn't scare her none. What do you mean, she's strange enough? You met her, Mr. Dollar? For about three minutes yesterday afternoon. That's long enough. How'd she strike you? Well, it was, it was one of the most honest kids I've ever met. Or else the cleverest. Yeah, that's about the size of it. Which do you think? Beats me. I've known her since the day she was born. Yes, sir, it's quite a family, including that fancy wife of Walter's. Hilda, what about her? Well, let's just say she's too much for him. You follow me, son? Uh, yeah, I think so. Ah, well, they're all worried. They're on edge. Either about the same thing or different things. They're pushed. They're driven. You can, you can feel it. There's a pressure out there, and anything can happen. Maybe it already has. Hmm? Maybe it happened three years ago. What do you mean? There was an auto accident three years ago, and Mrs. Greenlee's son and his wife, Susan's parents, they were killed in it. Well, I've got the morgue files here. I wrote it up pretty complete when it happened. Yeah, I'll want to look through those files later. But right now, you want the story behind the story. If there is one. Well, if there is, I don't know it. I think you would, if anybody would, being a newsman. Well, as far as I know, it was just an accident. Well, how did it happen? Well, it was on the road to the ranch, uh, up there where it winds through the bluffs. It was raining, pitch black. There'd been an argument back at the house. And, well, they had a lot of arguments, I guess. But anyway, Hilda got mad and left, and took her car and headed for town. And a while afterward, Ed had all he could take, and he ran out too and jumped in his car. Susan tells me that was a habit of her father's whenever he lost his temper in an argument. Yeah, he'd always get in his car and drive like a demon till he got over it. She also made a kind of a strange remark. She said they knew about it. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, I guess you'll have to ask Susan what she meant. All right. So Ed jumped in his car that night. Yeah, and then Mary went with him, uh, trying to calm him down, I guess. So he... He come around that curve, he must have been doing 60, skidding, half out of control. And there was Hilda's car parked on the curve right square in his headlights. Just smashed right into it at full speed. Both cars rolled over the bank, caught fire, and burned up. Him and Mary were dead before the car stopped. How did Hilda get out of it? She wasn't there. She had a flat, left her car parked, and started back on foot. I see. She was lucky, that's all. She sure was, Mr. Connors. Real lucky. I took a back file of the Tribune into the outer office and went over the news stories on the deaths of Ed Greenlee and his wife. I found nothing that Will Connors hadn't already told me. Shocking loss, fine people, sudden accident. I kept hanging up on that word, accident. I kept wanting to put a question mark after it. I was so absorbed, I didn't even notice her come in until she spoke to me. Hello, Mr. Dollar. Well... Well, are you following me, Susan? Nope. Got some copy for Mr. Connors. I write articles for him sometimes. You, you know, clever kid and all that sort of... Hmm, I see you took me seriously. How do you figure? You didn't close that paper fast enough. Now, why would an investigator from the Cattlemen's Association be interested in an auto accident three years back? Uh, suppose you tell me. Because you're not an investigator for the Cattlemen's Association. Who are you, Mr. Dollar? <laughs> I've got half a notion to level with you, Susan. Then I'll go the other half by leveling with you. Aunt Hilda called the association office in Reno this morning. They said they never heard of you. Imagine that. Mr. Parks was out at the ranch just before I left. She asked him about you, too. He said he'd never seen or heard of you. I see. He was lying, though. I can always tell when people are lying, and they know it, too. That's why they're uncomfortable around me. Yeah, I, uh, I know what you mean. Hey, look, Susan, 
Did Mr. Parks talk to your grandmother? No. He was supposed to arrange for me to see her. About the accident? Maybe. I'm not sure yet. I'm shooting in the dark. Oh, it's time somebody did. Where are you staying, Mr. Dollar? At the Carmen Manor. Okay. Uh, I'll get it set up and call you there later. Get it set up? Sure. Fix things so that you can get in to see my grandmother. That's what you wanted, doesn't it? Well, all right. I went back to my hotel room and settled down to wait. If a 16-year-old kid could manage what a bank president couldn't, then me for the juvenile league. What happened a couple of hours later, though, wasn't exactly juvenile. Hey, come in. Hello. Well. Are you busy, Mr. Dollar? Not too busy. Come in. Thanks. I don't believe I'm I... I'm Hilda uh... I imagine you've heard of me during your cattle investigation. Well, somehow you don't seem to fit with cattle. <laughs> A compliment? Observation. What do I fit with? I don't know yet, Mrs. Gramley. Hilda. Hmm. Now I'm beginning to know. Cigarette? Thanks. I'll stick with my own brand. It usually works out better that way. Thanks. Nice cigarette case. Gift. I'm always getting gifts. Including a wedding ring? Oh, I've got one. It's around someplace. Just so you don't forget where you left it. I couldn't if I wanted to. Uh, you wouldn't have a drink for a lady, would you? Brandy. I love brandy. And gifts. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other things. Like money? Oh, money's real nice. It's next to the best. Now, what's the best? Excitement. I see. Don't you think it's best? Well, it depends. At least you're in the right spot for it. I hope so. Look, I haven't got any money, and I never give gifts. You've got brandy, though. Pour us a drink, Johnny, and then we'll talk. What about? Mm. Excitement. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a worried old lady shows her medal, a gambler shows his hand, and the game gets tense, tight, and a little bit frightening. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>